So let's just start off with uh, the most broad thing possible. What controls the overall uh, global mean temperature? In other words, the average, the average of the planet. We know that pretty well. We know it pretty well over accurately, let's say, since maybe even, well, since we've uh, had thermometers. And then we have other proxies to go further back, like tree rings. So a proxy is, is a bit, you could think of a thermometer as a proxy. A proxy is a way of measuring something. So for climate, uh, you have proxies. And if you want to, if you, you can go so far back with different proxies. Thermometers have been around for uh, 17, maybe 250 years. So we can have accurate temperature records. But then there, weren't, there wasn't everywhere around the globe. Right? I mean, there's obviously a lot more records of temperature over land than there is over the oceans. But then since the 60s, we've had satellites, and now we have the temperature record of the atmosphere. So we have a pretty good idea of the global mean temperature. So what controls it, ultimately? Anybody want to hazard a guess? What controls the temperature of the planet, ultimately? The main thing is the heat that comes in and the heat that goes out, right? You get heat from the sun. The planet heats up. It gives off heat. So ultimately, the thing that controls the temperature of the planet is electromagnetic radiation. So it's all about radiation, OK? So EM radiation, light. Basically, how much heat goes in and how much goes out. How much heat enters Earth and how much leaves it. in a nutshell. And this is all radiation. These are all photons. We talked a lot about photons. So the photons that come in, the heat that enters the Earth's atmosphere, comes in the form of sunlight, short wavelength radiation. So we have very, very small wavelength. That enters the Earth through the atmosphere. The Earth heats up. And then the heat that comes back out is of a much uh, longer wavelength. The reason is because the sun is incredibly hot. The surface temperature of the sun is maybe 5,000 degrees centigrade, which means it gives off, when things are really hot, they give off a different type of light. So the sun gives off all sunlight mainly. So this is why our eyes have developed to work very well in sunlight. So the sun gives off a lot of different types of light, but the one that gives off the most is sunlight, which is short wavelength photons. The Earth is not as hot as the sun, or we wouldn't be here. The Earth has an temp average temperature of maybe 20, 25 degrees centigrade, a bit like you. So you're the, 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 the heat that you give off, the radiation that you give off, as you know, all right, uh, we can't see it. All right? So if I, if I flip the lights, ah, let's get electrocuted as usual. All right? You can't, if it was dark enough, you agree that I wouldn't be able to see you because you're not giving off any visible light. Is that a phone? OK? You're reflecting it, but you're not giving it off. OK? So the Earth gives off this long wavelength radiation, and it receives short wavelength radiation. So you could say sunlight is basically short wave radiation. Which we can represent with this type of thing. So it has a lambda, s if you like. Okay, and it's a characteristic of its temperature. High surface temperature of the sun. So the sun's surface temperature is 4,800 degrees uh, Kelvin. Or if you want, yeah, that's fine. Actually, it's 4,800 degrees C. It doesn't make too much difference at that point. Okay. So because the sun is 
really hot. I mean, it's much hotter in the center, but at the outside, it's about that. It gives off this type of radiation, short wavelength radiation. The hotter something is, the shorter the wavelength radiation it gives off. Um, so the sun is very hot. It gives off this type of radiation, whereas the Earth gives off, or emits, gives off long wavelength radiation. There's something going on in the other room, I think. So I might have to get a bit louder. I always put a loud movie clip on. The Earth gives off long wavelength radiation, principally because the Earth's temperature, so you could represent that something like this, lambda Earth. And this is because the Earth's surface temperature is about 20 degrees C. It's about, maybe, something like that, the average. So the Earth, or you, or me, uh, if you measure the temperature of this room, something like this. So it gives off radiation that you can't see. It's called infrared radiation, heat. And it receives radiation that's really hot from the sun. And the thing that controls the temperature of the planet that we live on is how much you get from the sun versus how much you give back out. All right, this is the net, it's, it's, a, it's an energy balance. So let's represent that as a picture. So I'll draw the, draw the planet. Uh, well, actually, I use it green. You don't have to, but it's the Earth, so let's make it green. Okay. Um, and it has this atmosphere. surrounding the planet, which allows us to breathe. And it receives light from the sun. This sunlight. So the sun's all the way over here, if you like. The Earth receives light from the sun. But notice it's only getting it in one direction, from over here. And then the Earth heats up, and it gives out radiation that is long wavelength, oh, squeaky long wavelength radiation, okay? Which is, I've done it as red, it's actually more, it's infrared, you can't actually see it, but we call it long wavelength and OLR, which stands for outgoing long wavelength radiation. Long wave, ah, it's the red chalk, it's much worse. Outgoing long wavelength radiation. Sorry, I know it hurts you more than me. Okay. And the sunlight, we, use, we often use the symbol uh, SW, which stands for short wave. Okay. All right, so the Earth's atmosphere, what's it made up of? What's the main gas in the Earth's atmosphere? Gases. There are gases in our atmosphere. Yes, nitrogen's a big one, okay? So we have a lot of nitrogen. Nitrogen, 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 okay? A lot of nitrogen. What else? Louder! Thank you, just because I can't hear. Okay, yeah, oxygen. So we also have oxygen. A lot of oxygen. So all this oxygen. In fact, you can write some numbers down. We have nitrogen. It's around about 78% maybe. And oxygen, maybe it's about 21%. But there are, there's a variation. It can be a little bit above, a little bit below, depending on whether there's a lot of water in the atmosphere. This is for a dry atmosphere. So we just have oxygen and nitrogen. If these were the only gases in the atmosphere, the planet would be at minus 15 degrees centigrade. We'd be freezing. Would, life wouldn't exist. If, these were, if, the, if the atmosphere just was, was just made up of these gases, we wouldn't exist. 
the planet would be minus 15. But it's not. It's much warmer than that. And it's because there, is, there are other gases called trace gases, which have the ability of reducing the amount of outgoing long wave radiation, which means not as much gets out, which makes the planet a bit warmer. So what are the main gases that, I'm gonna, that, are, that keep the planet warm? Carbon dioxide. There's one that's actually more important in terms of greenhouse effect than carbon dioxide, which is methane is not as important as carbon dioxide. They're, they're about the same. Nope. Which is it's actually more has a bigger I impact in controlling the temperature. It's a, it's, 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 there's a lot more of it. It's not up there yet. Anybody? No. So there's not that. There's not. It's, there's a lot of it. Two percent of the atmosphere is made of this stuff. If if the if the atmosphere is in the tropics. And it's polyatomic. Notice these are diatomic. The diatomic means two. So diatomic molecules don't um, trap heat because they're diatomic. We can talk about that later. But these are both diatomic. They don't have any effect on controlling heat. So sunlight goes in, out go, heat goes out, planet freezes. Which is the gas that you have? Uh, there's a lot of it. If you look in the sky, it's everywhere. <laughs> I can see one right now. Yeah which are made up of, right, it's water vapor, okay? Water vapor is a very significant greenhouse gas, okay? So H2O, ah, come on, there we go. H2O, H2O, H2O. So there's, it's a, in, in a moist atmosphere, H2O can be up to 2%. And it has a big impact on, this is one of the main reasons we're not freezing. It's a lot of water vapor, and it's polyatomic. Polyatomic means, uh, well, these are diatomic, I should write that down. Yeah, I should write it so you can actually read it as well. Diatomic. They have no effect on uh, the atmosphere. Water is polyatomic, has a big impact. So why is everybody concerned about carbon dioxide? Well, there's been the same amount of water vapor in the atmosphere for the last million years. Because what happens with water vapor, water, it evaporates from the ground or from rivers or from sea. It goes into the atmosphere and it forms clouds and it comes back down. And then it goes back up and it comes back down etc etc it doesn't build up so the water this this has never this does not change this is constant as basically as it rains out after maybe a week or a few days okay it rains out so water vapor is a very important greenhouse gas, but it's not increasing, not yet. Because it rains, you get clouds, right? So it never changes, let's say. However, carbon dioxide, methane, are also are very important, but there's hardly, there's not a lot of them. CO2 is about, right now it's maybe 0.04%. But if you looked at CO2 in, let's say, 1900, it's 0.03%. Because the CO2 is accumulating. That's the big difference. So is methane. The CO2, it doesn't rain. You don't rain CO2. It just sits there in the atmosphere for decades. And if you keep putting more in, it's going to get... The stamp's going to get more and more and more. So CO2 is also in our atmosphere. Admittedly, not a lot of it, but it's growing. So you can put a bit of CO2 in there. You can also put some methane. 
So methane is actually a lot less than CO2, but it's, it has a bigger bang for its buck because it has a much more global warming potential. One molecule of methane is, you know, 36 times worse than the CO2, principally because there isn't as much. But the, 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 the key feature of this is that, yes, water vapor is, is probably more important than CO2 in terms of getting a greenhouse effect. And it has been there for millions of years. It hasn't changed because it rains. This one, on the other hand, is growing. And that's, that's why scientists are concerned. I mean, this is, a big, this is a concern for humanity. This thing is not decreasing. It's going up and up. All right? Yes, it's very small. But, you know, if you have 0.03% blood alcohol level, then you're not allowed to drive. That's a very small amount. But, you know, little things can have a big impact. But it's basically, it's growing. You go from 1900 to now, it's got an increase from 0.03 maybe to 0.04%. So this is a big, in terms of how much you have. So it accumulates. <coughs> 